Hey, greetings YouTube, performance reviews where I give you the review from the technician's point of view. And tonight we're going to uh, take care of this Hoover Wind Tunnel T bagged. Or Wind Tunnel Max, as it says on there, that's really funny. Uh, anyways, so let's go and break this down. You can see I kind of already poked around inside and I'll cut that in later. So the first thing about this is this was made to use Hoover Type Y HEPA bags and Somebody's been using whatever generic bag in here, even though it says 3M. It's not right. This is of the generation where it should have a latex seal. And what's cool about this is there's supposed to be a push and the bag should drop off. Now there's not enough stuff in the bag to make that happen, but interesting bag dot they decided to go with on here. Mm, this is kind of fuji. So you can see just what, what that bag let through on this machine. That's no es bueno. Now, just like a Hoover Tempo, which is basically what this is, this is a modernized Hoover Tempo. Um, and you know, hey, if it works, don't, don't change it. And you can see we have all that there. That's gonna need to be changed as well. Now, going to the back side of this machine. Again, I've already taken some of this apart. Brush roller is gonna need to be cleaned off. That's gonna need to be washed. And that's going to be kind of the theme of this. It's going to need to be washed. Put some of the tools off here. I already took the hose and threw it in the washing machine. Uh, non electric hoses are great in a front load washing machine, if you didn't know. Take the handle off. Oh, that feels abnormally loosey goosey. All right, and the handle does have this nice little. Uh, plug in there it looks like a rainbow plug or something like that and that does have the switch on it as well So we're just gonna set that aside And Because it's so dirty I'm actually gonna take this apart way farther than I usually do on something like this Because I wish to give it a review with a clean start Readjusted the camera so everything is visible. And this is some nice sandwich construction going on, which will make this very durable uh, in the future in terms of how this is made. By doing the screws in from both sides like that, that, that really uh, means they don't have to use as much material to get a strong design. So, from an engineering point of view, I really appreciate that. What it looks like on this one, we're just gonna those two off as well. And set so the actual motor aside. You can see the where the belt is ground off right there. Now this should have a bunch of screws just fall out of here. We have the handle release. Now this I got a pulley mechanism. Um, Guess I'm gonna wash that and then clean it out real fast. I don't usually like to wash that sort of thing. Oh well. Uh, and you can see there's a metal mechanism under here. So this little bit of use of stamped sheet metal is what allows this to fit on this plastic housing. It's not just relying on the plastic housing. Um, the vacuums that have done that, both Hoover, Dyson's done that. A lot of companies have done that. Uh, Recar did that and later had to, Recar simplicity later had to brace it with metal. So it's good that they start off. I mean, this is a great alternative, and also if you're looking for a Panasonic now that they're out of the U.S. market, this is a great alternative to that as well. A lot of screws in here. And so far, all these screws have been the same, so I really, uh, that's a really big pro. The only one that's been different has been a little screw to hold the clear part in the middle, so it's memorable, and the handle screw. Pull apart. A little peanut bulb in there. Put that in there. And that just comes loose. Huh. Let's see if that's separated. Sure did. <laughs> sure did. Ask and you shall receive. And there are the guts of the machine. 
nothing really much to write home about in here. We have a uh, synthetic seal. That's good. It's not rubber. It's not going to rot. The motor is a... Uh... <laughs> well, I'm not even going to try and pronounce that. I'm just going to show that on camera right there. So that's who made the motor. Uh, presumably TCI owns that company, if I had to guess. They own so many things. Oh, there's a fusible link with a zip tie in here. That's kind of... Yeah, unusual, but not unheard of. And there's our filter grill that was dirty. I, I really don't want to have to unwire much, but I guess I do need to pull this back cover off. So it's not as simple as something like a tempo or old school Hoover wind tunnel. Because they have that switch integrated into the handle. That makes sense now. Right. I really do have to pull out all these screws. Expecting a gasket in there, but there's there's not. Are there any screws on the other side? I really want to get into oh back compartment. I wonder. I wonder if the mask the thing there. I wonder if the magical thing is cutting this off. That zip tie. Answer is force. That doesn't sound fun, does it? Ooh. Really got a screw or something in there? That's uh, certainly interesting. Ooh. All right, that sounded horrible, but it didn't break anything. That's just how it is. endless wire harnesses so we're just going to just because I have never actually gone this deep in this particular machine before you know uh, on the on the bench we often don't go so deep so we are going to if we just snap a picture of that just to be on the safe side but all this really kind of makes sense when I look at this where it's gonna go so we want to pull Select wires out of here. The, the brown gets cut and the white gets cut. And everything else starts to pop, pop out all on its own really nicely, hopefully. Oh, I'll repair here and cut our yellow lead and we'll cut a white lead. And again, if you're ever unsure about wiring something, leaving some evidence behind like that is nice. I wanted to show how intricate this pedal release is. So there's a metal piece right here that brings up the uh, idler pulley. And this is activated by the main body when it's brought in the upright position. But then the actual switch and you can see there's a metal cam going into a plastic piece. So very intricate. Show it again from this side. Not as much to see there. So everything has been freshly dishwashered and it's time to put it back together and there is Quite a bit of stuff here to do, and I haven't really done one of these before, like I stated, so 
I'm sure it's really no different than any other Hoover that I've done, but let's uh, go ahead and put this together. I think the first thing I'm going to do is wire the motor up and get this back assembly back together. <laughs> no pun intended there, back assembly back together. And I'm not sure which way this goes, so I'm going to go check with the handle assembly over here. Luckily, I have this, which I can see that there's a plug here. Plug that in. So that's the way that goes in there. Does that go? So there's a couple interesting things here in terms of this all can go a couple different ways, which I wasn't really expecting. Oh, nice little route there for our cables. Hopefully I'm not banging this around too much for anybody using headphones. All right, this all. It's interesting is that this goes in here, but nothing actually connects to the black lead through that. That just kind of goes in there. Um, this goes into this little S groove. That's kind of unhoover like There are actually a lot of improvements here from older model Hoovers, if we look at like something like a Hoover Tempo or things of that nature, so I'm happy to see that. I'm actually going to just shorten this cord a little bit. I want to give myself a little bit more slack to work with, and this will freshen this cord anchor up a little bit. Let's just push down on that. Alright, so now we got to just do that, and let's see where this goes in. Yeah, I think this goes in next. That all goes on top of that, just to clarify. Or does that go below that? No, that goes below that. that I was wrong. All right, all that's on there. I remember all this being fairly kind of stiff when I pulled it off. So a headphone warning here, I'm gonna smack it. Yep, that settled things nicely. That way the screws don't get stripped out. Give a couple more wax here. Excellent. And this is what happens when a vacuum gets in front of me. I hit it with a hammer, of course. Now there is a little dingus that goes right here. I didn't realize I was doing that one right now. Right. So this dingus, um, as you can see, is part of the hose. I just want to see where it goes and how it goes. It's kind of weird. You actually are supposed to put the hose on at this point, but I don't want... I'm going to leave this screw out so that can... I just want to see what goes where when I'm putting screws back. All right. So that's going to go on a little bit later. I'm just going to leave that off. That's why we're tight tightening things up here. That didn't go as planned. I tried to settle that. Let's do that. It's interesting what pieces come on and off of this. It's pretty modular. So that's for the hose. I guess I should put four screws in there. I feel like there should be something else going in these grooves, but I really don't see anything that matches up. Double checking my bucket over there parts. When I wash these, I don't wash them alone. There were th two other machines this went in the uh, dishwasher with. So just making sure. The Mila parts obviously don't go to it, but some of the Turbo Cat parts I have that I wash this with are kind of the same color. All right, so that leaves us with some wires. And I'm gonna put this. You can see there's like room for a dirt sensor or something in there. I think that's interesting that the uh, machine is not completely sealed through that. They're, they're, I don't know why those are there on this particular model. I'm sure somebody could comment below who understands these things better than me. I just don't like that at all. Well, I do. <laughs> Anytime I find holes on a machine like that because they can whistle, squeal, something like that. Uh, I know I shouldn't be covering up holes. I don't understand why they're there. But it sure is better than fucking unknown holes, so I need to edit that out. 
that's going to get me demonetized for sure. Um, excuse the sense of humor on my part or lack thereof if that sort of thing upsets you. So as I wired this up, uh, I was just looking at seeing what we had and everything looks uh, pretty straightforward on this particular vacuum. I don't know why I was thinking this was going to be difficult. I don't know why I remember it being difficult, but it's not, so uh, keep that in mind if you ever have to work on one of these. They're easy enough to wire up. Make sure that motor's settled in there. That gasket just fine. And uh, as I was doing this, I realized everything is color-coded and fairly simple. Some of the past tubers, you would have like purple and blue and white wires all tied together, but this one appears to be all simple and uniform in the same color the way it should be. Yeah, I just messed that up. Just that one together. And I prefer these wire nuts over um, the crimp connectors because they can be taken off. So if this ever has to be serviced again in the future, that can be a big plus. Uh, the big negative to these, of course, is these can come off through vibration. So you want to, when you're, you're doing these, seal this up. Uh, so when you're doing this, the best thing you can do is take some electrical tape and put some tape on. Now this originally had a zip tie holding those wires together. Eh, uh, I don't see them really, I don't really have enough room in there to bounce around and cause any problems, but that is something to note in case you're wondering what I'm doing here. But that's what I'm doing with the electrical tape is just use that as a lock tie to keep those from vibrating loose basically. was interesting this fusible link like this and maybe that's why the zip tie was there because this fusible link is pretty big and that would bounce around let me see if i have a zip tie for it oh, i should stop the camera apparently zip ties are scarce in my shop right now so we're just gonna tuck all this in. But if you have a zip tie, I'd probably recommend putting that back together. Meanwhile, this is probably a good time to mention that I am funded by my Patreon supporters who are awesome and make this sort of thing happen. And uh, hopefully you guys are gonna make some zip ties happen here in the future. Um, I'm kind of low on a few little shop supplies, so maybe that's where this is gonna go. Yeah, that settled it this time. So we're just literally gonna just start putting screws in here. You can see the gap I was trying to close. That gap is now closed. And again, on a machine like this, where the parts are kind of, the plastic's cheap. I mean, this is a, you know, sub $200 machine. I'm not gonna fault it for doing that. This is relatively intricate for what it is. Put some screws in here. There's a lot of screws. If you're trying to turn all these screws manually uh, with just a screwdriver, you would not be having a fun time. Unfortunately, I have gone to work for multiple shops that don't have an electric screwdriver that's working. And I've brought mine from home several times just to prove the point. And then, you know, that lasts for about two weeks. And then they end up just buying one because they really see the value in it. So on a clear part like this, a little bit of spray away just to make it extra clear. And I think it's probably time to put our light bulb together. And we can put... This is also the handle. It's odd they made the uh, handle and lens the same thing. It's very strange. Uh, but again, there's a lot of little, good little engineering bits in this machine that I most certainly appreciate that TTI did when they made this. Let's see if we can just wipe off those paint marks. That, yeah. There we go. All right, everything looks good. Uh, on that body. So I'm very happy with all that. So now let's put, let's put the body where it belongs into the base. And now I'm not really sure what goes where. 
we are going to put a little bit of grease uh, just on this. Very little. This will just help keep it from squeaking and stuff. I plan on doing an actual review on this, so it would be nice if while I'm doing that review it's not squeaking back and forth. Uh, again, you don't want to overkill that grease, just, just a tad bit. Make sure we put that pedal release in there. You wouldn't want going together without that. <laughs> That all goes in there, just drops on there like that. And I'm going to use my 409 bottle to hold this in place, just while I put these screws in. So now it's really coming together. I'll put this guy in its place. So before I start putting too much together, I am just gonna look and see where this piece goes. And if you're ever wanting to really make these shine, a little bit of furniture polish on the inside really makes those look super nice from the outside. Just a little pro tip there. Also makes it smell lemon fresh. All right. Now, there were several places when I was taking this apart that there were these little, these screws right here. And these are the different screws. Why they're Phillips number two. Some of these go to some really intricate bodywork pieces. So we don't want to screw those up or over tighten any of those. Where they go is pretty obvious when you look at them. Excellent. Now we can resume with putting the bigger screws in here. And as I said, I was taking this apart, the sandwich construction on this really is going to make this pretty strong. Even though there's not the strongest of materials holding this together, it looks like we have one little screw hidden under here. It's really coming together nicely. So, before I get too far ahead of myself down here, um, I want to put this back section on with this, which unfortunately does require me throwing the hose on. And that also then requires me putting the handle on. So, let's put that on. That's one of those screws that was different than the others. slightly tighter being a handle screw so the cool thing about doing this I also wash this hose in my washing machine if you have a front load washing machine you actually wash some of this stuff in it this little little tip of it up you ever get a stinky hose or something like that all right now we can resume the million one screws that this thing has to put back together And that, of course, has a very prominent place. That right, goes up there. All right. So now, now we're going to put the brush roller section on. I'm going to try not to goof this up. I want you guys to see this front and center. All right, turning that by hand, that all looks good. See all that goes on there. Let's put uh, the rest of this together. <laughs> oh boy. Let's put the base plate on.
Excellent. All right. Now on to bags, filters, cords, all that good stuff. Um, put the uh, All right, now on to the bags and the rest of the stuff. And I'll put a link in the description to the proper vacuum bags. You want to make sure you use genuine bags. Do not use the replacements for this. They are quite bad. I'll put that filter in there. And then this filter on the side is not an allergen filter. It is to catch motor carbons, if you're wondering what its purpose is. And that's all it does. So really, all the filtration on this machine is done in the HEPA bag. So that's why I say it's important to get... Uh, the genuine ones. All right. So one thing they re launched when this machine was launched, this was the first machine that I can remember that came with the HEPA bags with the rubber gasket. For a long time, Hoover did not use this rubber gasket, and that's really important for making all this work. And the great thing about this is that it just slides into place. So super easy to put into place properly. Um, Kind of takes the guesswork out of changing the bag if you've ever messed with an old school vacuum. So let's see how the rest of this does. All right, well, I got this Hoover back together. Let's uh, see how it works and runs. Plug it in. adjustment all the way up here for a second. Wow, that really smells good. It smells like laundry detergent and uh, lemony fresh dish soap. Uh, so thanks everybody for tuning in to my Hoover Wind Tunnel tea uh, bagged. It's the bag. It's not the bag list. That'll come at a later date. Uh, give this video a thumbs up. Share it if it helped you or even bet better check out our Patreon.